Hey, how are you? I'm Steve. Hey, welcome to Woodworking Masterclass. Bit of a hodgepodge. I know I haven't been on for a couple of weeks, but been really, really busy. Rains have been disastrous. We got flooded out two more times. Front shed's a mess. Yard, if I stand there, I just sink, even with Wellington boots on. In fact, my, my truck I parked down the backyard and I can't move it. It's actually sunk down a couple of inches. So I'm going to wait until it dries out before I dry and drive it out. But anyway, got a couple of quick little jobs to do and I thought, as it's been a while, I might as well get on there and do it. Since the last stream, when I made a, quickly threw together a cigar box guitar, look, it, it wasn't meant to be a, a serious, this is a wonderful instrument, but it breaks it down. If you want to take the time to get the strings, get it tuned properly, and there's a couple other things I did afterwards, um, made sure that the strings didn't bite into the box, but basically you can get the, the whole structure done in under 50 minutes and then spend an hour or so refining it and I guarantee you'll have a reasonable instrument you can play. So uh, I haven't finished the hubcap guitars, been doing other stuff. But in the process, in the process, here you go, I shall show you. I, I've sort of been scaring the internet and I've bought plans of liars, dulcimers, hammered dulcimers, and a harp. Plus, I'm also making a harp, which I shared in that book of Dennis Waring's last stream. So that's what I've been up to. It's been, I'll fold these up some. It's a bit like road maps. Those of you that are old enough that can remember a road map, they never fold it up the way you thought they should. Just the way it goes. And the, the water we've had around here has been so bad that the moisture in the air has really made this paper so soft. It's just ordinary printing paper. So that's what we're up against. Well, that's what I'm doing. And... Um, some of the beautiful timber I've got, I decided I'm not going to have or waste it on um, just making furniture that one person can enjoy. I'd like to put it in instruments and then if they're good enough and someone wants to play an instrument, a lot of people can enjoy it. This is one I just bought this one on eBay just to have a play, mainly from a granddaughter to play with and to have a look how it's made. Very cheap, very ordinary, but it does make a nice little tune. So there you go, let me put that down. It's gonna take a, a week at least, I think, before I can get it tuned properly because the strings are all stretched and, well, not stretched, they're new strings, so it'll take a while to stretch. And I just noticed someone's in the chat room, so there you go, g'day Derek, g'day Joe. Uh, and the most are, g'day and g'day Jared. Oh, and that's the Suffolk harp that I, I might get around to doing some of that today. I don't know. I've got an hour and a half or an hour and a quarter, and then I've got to go up to the house or else I get in trouble with the boss. All right, got this fruit thingamajiggle. What's it? Oh, to fix. Oh, as you can tell, it's a bit, it's, it's a little bit sad. It, it really is. Um, mate of mine. Got a fruit shop and I was up there a little while ago and he said, can you, can you do anything with this? I said, oh yeah, give us a go. So anyway, I fixed it and took it back. He said, oh, that's awesome. Oh, this one's broken too. So I, I fixed that one and I took it back Sunday. I took it back on Sunday. And they said, oh, that one's gone too. So I don't know if that's the last one or not, but we'll knock that up and we'll fix it. G'day Louise, how are you? Are you wet out there as well, dear? Oh, it's putrid here. Even me chickens are starting to get webbed feet. They're not laying as much either. I'm blaming the sunshine on that. I only got eight eggs today. But I still... I tell you what, when I first got chooks, a, a bag of feed would last me ten days. Then it went down to a week. And now the wild ducks and the doves and the crows... I found out there's free food available. A $30 bag of feed 
lasts me four days. Mongrels. All right, let's just have a, oh, my people, this thing here. Oh. Uh, oh, that's nice, WNM crew. Whoa, hang on, I'm going off. Oh, this is a crank call, I guarantee it. Here we go. Hello. Yep, there you go. Don't talk to me within three seconds, I hang up. Um, I am expecting a call, but that's all right. If I get that, I won't take it. It can go to the message bank. I think that was the dead one, wasn't it? That one's all right. That one's all right. That one's okay. Okie dokie. So... That looks like that stave has broken, so we just give it a little tap. Teach it not to do it again. Okay, so that one can go in here, like that. I don't know if I've got any smaller screws. Let me see. Okay. All right, let me just see if I've got any. Oh, what's that there? That's too small. That one might be right. I don't know. Could get away with that one. Oh. Got a heap of them here, look at that. Good to have a little supply. That one will do there. I'll just put that right about there, I reckon. All right, so that fixed those up. And what I'm going to do is just put wedge pieces in there. And in case you wonder why I got that one, I, I, um, I did that one and I cut it wrong for one of the others I repaired. I cut both of them that way. So then when you put them together, one was upside down. So instead of usual thing and chucking the patty and throwing it away, I hung on to it and I'm pleased I did because I get to use it here. So, what I've got to do here is, let's just have a, that's got to be a bit longer, okay, I'll just put that one in there like that, and this, this is the way you've never seen a spiral bubble used before, but what I'm doing is actually, oh that's pretty flat, getting the bubble here and if it's out it doesn't matter because I'm just going to have the same bubble up here so no it's parallel. It's on the line so that means that's got to come up a little bit. Okay. That is pretty pretty darn impressive I think. I'm going to mark that with a pencil if I can find the pencil. How's everybody been anyway? Oh, look at that, everyone's talking. I'll be, I'll be with you in a tick. Now, hopefully, these are going to be pretty close. Hardly fine furniture, but we've got to do it the best we can. Just the way it's meant to be. Okay, that's 120. It's close enough to 120. So what I want here is... Mark 120 here, which is there, and 120 there, yeah, let's go back here, okay, so now I'll get this bit of timber here and put the bottom on that line I just marked here at 120 and then just draw a line up there and a line up 
there. There you go. And then this one up here. Alright. So I've just got to go over and cut those two lines over on the bandsaw. Which I shall do. So you can come over there if you like. Let's do that one. We'll spin it around. <clears throat> Is it? It's going to spin around. Oh. There you go. Look at that. That marvellous when technology works. When I've got to use a bandsaw, I like to only have the minimal gap between the thing I'm sawing and this. This timber's wet too, so it's not the best, but it's all right. It'll do. I told you I love foot brakes on bandsaws, they're just awesome. Makes life so much more bearable. All right, now that should, all things are equal, fit there, that fits there. So now, what we do is get that so it's roughly in the middle. And this is where I made the mistake last time. So there's the middle of marked. Let's move this down for a tick. Oh, whoops. And get a square. Now we've got to cut from the bottom up on this. It's a bit wet, so it doesn't matter if I go a little bit bigger. So now if I cut out this one here, that should fit nicely in that way. And, oh, crikey, it's a little bit too fat. That's all right, we'll take a little bit out of that. That's all right, we can do that. That's the same, all right. So we'll go back over to the bandsaw and I'll cut that out. Let me have a chat first. Oh, I do love to have a chat. Uh, send the rain down to Victoria. Jared, mate, you come up, fill your boots. Have as much as you like. I am over it. So send me chickens are getting wet feet. Susie's over it. As a fact, Susie's got a, a toy, little Toyota Corolla hatch and a uh, block. Got a bit of a slope on it, but it's two acres, so it's a big block. And right up near the gate, I went off the driveway to turn around and we got bogged in the lawn in the driveway. Louise, you know where it is. Right up the top there, that's how wet we are here. It's absolutely shocking. Oh, oh good, Louise, I'm looking forward to that. I like the weekend. Oh, don't go express post. No, Louise, don't send an express post. It'll never get there, especially if you send it with Australia Post. Hey, how good are they? We deliver to your door, but then you've got to go and pick it up. Then you've got to stand in line, and then you've got to have ID. Yeah, good service. I'm not, I'm not going there. Ah, oh, dear. Oh, yeah, Jared, you've got it. You've got it. <clears throat> It's raining in Melbourne, Joe. Oh, okay. But only this last... Oh, so it's just a shower. <laughs> oh, did you watch the football? Those of you in Australia, did you watch the football, the magic, whatever it's called? Um, I don't know what it's called. Anyway, it's something called stadium. I was like a cow paddock by the time they finished. Absolutely awesome stuff. 
Uh, Matthew, good day. We are well, although it's evening for me. I'm just doing a quick one before I go up to the house. What's the plan, Steve? Brace the legs. That's it, Joe. Brace the legs. Bash them together. I mean, you would think, you would think they're both pine. No, that's um, pine. That's Japanese cedar. It's just so I had some lying around. So I'm, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how it burns because I'm going to give it, I'm going to try and match the colour by burning it. I know Japanese cedar will do it, but I'm not sure about this pine because as I see it fell, it's still wet. I'll put a moisture meter on it's about 17%, I reckon. Anyway, that's what it is. <laughs> it's all right, Joe. I have a rule. I start with 10 and I end with 10. G'day, Nathan. Oh, mate, while you're there, while you're there, um, I was going to send you a photograph of it, but I will tell you, uh, the blade I have on my drop saw is a, an Irwin 40 tooth, I think it might be a, a rip or, what is it, professional wood cutting, no, it's a 40 tooth. General purpose, 250 is it, or 280, I don't know. Um, 254 mil, and it's a quarter professional wood cutting 93003. So professional wood cutting 93003. Got it from Bunnings, and I think it cost me about 20 bucks. So that's what I've got on my drop saw, because I don't, to me, saws aren't a finish. Uh, they're a waste removal thing. Doesn't matter if it's a band saw, a drop saw, table saw, jig saw, scroll saw, they're waste removal. After that, that's when your hand planes, your chisels and your technique comes in. So anyway, all right, let's go back over there and I just stay, str stay strong, Joe, all right? I'll, I'll try not to spin you out. All right. Went off the line a bit on that one, um, basically because I think this wood's still going to grab, it's going to be a bit wet. Alright, I'm just going to take a smidge off of this. That was just a blade thickness. I might do the same to the other side. All right. There you go. Awesome. All right. There we go. Knock that. Send a bit out. Oh, there's a long way down. Oh, they're genuine noises too. Here we go. If you ever want to cut something uh, to chip it out, the temptation, you go on the line. Yeah, baby. Get, get down there. Come on, behave yourself. All right. Yep. Put your chisel, flat part of your chisel, on the line, and you give it a whack, and what happens? The wedge part of the chisel will drive it further into the cut, so you don't get a clean cut. So if you come up about a mil or one and a half mil above the line you want to do, then you can give it a give it a donk, and it will do whatever it does. It doesn't matter. Then you can come on the line and accurately give it a, a thump and it will go right on the line you want. It'll be a nice clean cut. Here you go. Tip for the day. All right, now, all things being equal, this should go into that and check. Oh, look at that. Sometimes you're lucky, eh? Oh, dear, oh, dear. And I might just take that down a tad further. 
What I could do, that's up a little bit. Yep. Put that in. This is a little bit up, and so is that. Obviously, so I could plane that with a block plane that can plane that. To be fair, this wood's wet, and it's rubbish wood, so I'm just going to increase the depth of this by, as we used to say in the military, three-fifths of five-eighths. Oh, not very much at all. I cleaned that up, didn't I? <laughs> Anyone in there? I'm sure they know what I was going to say. Okay. And then we do that. That will do me. That's, that's close enough. I'm going to lose any sleep over that. So, put that in the bin. It's been really, really good if I mark which was which. There we go. That one goes there, that one goes there, so that goes there, that goes there, and that should go there, and that should go there. And there we have it. Okay. We can spin those around and do whatever we like with them. If I can find a drill bit, it would be excellent. I don't know if that's going to be the right bit, but we'll try. Whoops. Most of it doesn't feel like the right bit. Hang on, let me, let me see. Where do I... Oh, look, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go, oh. <coughs> That'll do right about there. That will do. I mean, it, this, honestly, it doesn't get much weight on it. it um, it's just a display thing more than anything else, so. Really good. I'll do it so you can see what I'm I miss fine furniture making. <laughs> oh, dearie, dearie, dear. Where are we? Oh, I bought these screws ages ago. I can't remember what for. Now that I'll never use them. So that's it. Never take stuff back because you'll find a use for them one day. This is going to be interesting. It'll be good. It'll be okay. Honestly, woodworking is such a lovely profession. You never know what job's going to come through the door next. Oh, I want to 
when I used to be a mechanic, it was the same thing. You go to work and you wouldn't know what you were going to do. The thing I hated was when you had a job left over from the day before. Ooh, that's tight. Okay. Now this one's going to be interesting. What we might do with this is we might move that over a bit, I think. Battery's starting to get a bit flat too. I love repairing broken things. My philosophy is they're already broken so I can't do any worse. Okie dokie. Now, 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 now. Here we go. Oh, we'll burn it. Here it comes up. <clears throat> this is a wet wood. Ah, oh, don't come up too bad. Japanese cedar burns better though. depending which way you look at it. Finished. Oh. Easy peasy. Oh, that's it. I'm going to deliver that one tomorrow. 
Right. Well, that was fun. Um, what am I going to do? Oh, that's right. I'm going to make a get ready for a. Um, now this is well, this is a harp I want to make. It's um, it's a Celtic harp out of that book by uh, Dennis Waring, and unfortunately, not all the measurements are in there, so I had to guesstimate some of it. But I've started, and. That's the start of the... Where are you? There you go. That's the start of the, the neck. And I've got a pillar, but it, um, it didn't glue very well, so I'm going to have to re-glue that, which I might do that very shortly. I'm using hide glue, which would have been what they used originally. And I want to keep it as authentic as possible. Um, and those of you who've been watching me for a while know that I like using high glue because it's fun. Um, what was I going to do? Oh, that's right, glue that up. Actually, that is still, it's still a bit sticky, that. It's still not as tight as I'd like it. So don't know, don't know. Anyway, I'll, uh, might do the pillar too. Keep that stirred. There we go. Whoop. Put that away. Put that away. See, look at that, I'm putting things away. <laughs> It won't last for long. Oh, although I must admit, it is, it is a bit nicer when it's tidier. All right. So I put things away so well I've forgotten where I put them. Where did I put the mouse? Anyone see what I did with the mouse? It is down there on the ground. There's every chance it won't work now. Oh, oh dear. Hup dee poop dee. All right. Ah. Um, where are we up to? Yeah, oh, I wasn't Cobo great. He's just a lovely lad when they interviewed him too. He was so humble and assuming, innocent, I would say. Didn't have the the standard patter that the seasoned players have. Yeah, well, you know, you all just thought the, the boys, the boys look after each other, definitely. Yeah, the, the boys, uh, you know, they looked after them. And, oh, you can almost say <laughs> what they're going to say. I do enjoy it. I do enjoy it, and I wouldn't be out there for all the money in the world, I tell you. They take some brutal hits. G'day, Vince! Denford, good evening! Ah, oh, all right. Well, um, I've got so many things I've got to do. Um, I might have a go at... Oh, I'm making this neck up, actually. And then I might have a go at gluing a neck. Let's see how we go. Uh, a pillar. Sorry, not a neck. Okay. Oh. This is the neck I want. And I figure, even if I never make one of these again, and it's not a bad habit to get into if you're going to be making things and it's going to take a bit of time, it doesn't really take that much extra time to make a template. I'm going to make a template out of... Um, I did have it here somewhere, here we go, out of MDF, and uh, then I'll make one out of plywood, and the beautiful thing is, if I want to make another one of these down the track, oh, my time is cut in half, because I've actually just got a template I can um, mark off, rather than having to 
start from the beginning again, which happens a lot of times. And there's a couple of ways you can do it, and there was a couple of ways I was going to do it, but I've, I've just made, Susie's not here, so I have made a managerial decision. Trevor, if you're watching, I know that's dangerous, mate, but I have. I've made, now, Susie's good. She said, oh, I have to make decisions when I'm in the workshop. When I'm in the house, different, different story again. Uh, all right, so what I'm going to do is I, initially I was going to just um, glue this onto this MDF and cut it out. But quite frankly, I, I think it's just as easy to draw it on using tracing paper, not tracing paper, carbon paper. So that's what I'm going to do. But what I will do is tape it down so it doesn't move. Um, what I did, this pattern I got from Music Makers, it's called a Shepherd Harp, and I, I downloaded the design. And I was very disappointed to start with because I, I haven't got it. Um, I actually went up to stationery shop, Office Works, and got them to print it out. And they printed it out in A3 for me, and they said it was to scale. So I thought, oh, well, fair enough. A3, I know that's not the right size, but if it's to scale, I should be able to work out the ratio and do whatever. Anyway, it didn't work out, and I was a bit disappointed, and I got it on their website, and I was just going to send them an email and say, you know, what's the GO? And then I read in their website, if you want a full-scale drawing, they download the free Adobe software, and I think it's Fox, Fox Adobe or something or other. Anyway, um, you download that free software, you download the plans, and then you put it through your printer, and this software will take over. And in this case, I think it divided it into 25 or 30 squares, and then it prints it out in pages with um, a 5 mil overlap. So hats off to them. I was very happy with that. Ow. Broke my pencil. And I don't know how accurately I'm going to follow this plan. Because, like most things, I do like changing it up. And, for example, in the neck, they say put a dowel. Well, no. I'm going to put a mortise and tenon. I'm just seeing how I'm going on the paper here, and I've just run out of paper, so... Uh, there's a couple other things I'm going to do, only because, I guess, I'm a woodworker, and I can see Better ways of making joints. Than just a dowel or a butt joint. I've got, to, I've got to concentrate, and if I don't concentrate, my tongue's going to hang out. <laughs> Always used to be the giveaway when I was a young fellow. If I was concentrating, the tongue would come out like that. Now, what do I get up to? 
There you go. Um, I like using MDF for initial jigs because it's so easy to uh, shape. I mean, you can use 100 grit sandpaper and get beautiful lines. If you can tell that, I mean, she's a bit, got a few wonky lines on it, but I'll be able to straighten those up. Then when I've got that cut, I will... Um, put it on plywood, 9mm uh, ply or 8mm ply, and then with a router profile bit, I'll go around that and I'll have a perfect shape. These have got particular radiuses or radii in there, so I've got to cut those out. So what I might just do... Oh, there's a long way there. I'll oh, just have a look, see. That's got to be half inch in there. And that's five eight in there. What else have we got? That's it. Okay, so what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut straight along there. And then these pieces here, what I'll do tomorrow is I'll go over to the drill press and I'll actually drill those holes so that'll give me what I need and then I can cut that out but for the meantime I'll just go over the bandsaw and we'll cut the roughy shape out and see how we go if I don't trip over this barrel that I just did. Once again I'll drop that down I'll turn the dust eye on. <clears throat> Cut it a bit wider, only so I can shape it. It's pretty close to the line. I don't quite when I concentrate.
There we go. That's it. So I'll do these with a the force and a bit. There's a five eighth there, a half inch there. Then I'll go around here, uh, possibly with a spoke shave or, yeah, I, I'd say it'll be a spoke shave. And then I'll clean that up and um, make a, whatever you may call it out of it. Apply, apply jig, apply jig. <clears throat> Your bench is lovely and tidy. Mine's some. I yeah, I, I, I'm pretty proud of it at the moment, Joe. I've got to tell you, I'm happy. Ah oh, dear. Uh, oh well, you can't complain. Oh, look, I reckon that was the best investment that I ever made into Adam. Wasn't he on fire on the weekend? Excuse me, we're into football. No, he's, he's terrific. Absolutely true. Hey, him and um, uh, the, 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 the Nathan Cleary. Oh, just. You know, I, I couldn't get a snooker ball there on a flat field, but they just. And the way he's got me how they can curve that ball. Soccer balls, I can understand how you can make that curve. How you make those weird shaped rugby league balls curve, I've got me. Anyway, uh, how's the knife block, Steve, mate? Funny you should ask that, it's still here. Oh, I've got to get it finished by Friday, so I can go and deliver it, but I have been busy doing other stuff. Who asked that? Oh, Vince, there you go. Hey, Jeff, how are you, mate? Barney of the Rubble? Uh, oh, there was something came up about music stands, and I thought, oh, oh, I've got to finish those. So, yeah, we'll... We will give it a go. We'll get it done. We shall. I did promise by the end of the year, but now I'm making all this other musical stuff. Could happen sooner. Then what are you like going to whinge about? We've still got a bonbon table to do. Lolly table. We'll do that too. I used to have that issue with Office Works. Yeah. Oh, that just... Thing that gets me, look, I know people are doing so. I have a mini ramp coming up here, but they're doing something, and there's a customer standing there, and they're. Uh, 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 uh. And then they look at you, uh, put a rubber band on something, and. Uh, uh. Yeah, in my day, there was a customer standing there, and that was money in your till. You just, excuse me, finish that. Yes, yeah, going to help you. And then you go back, and what are they so. Single minded nowadays, they can't remember to go back. I oh, know I have problems remembering to go back, but I'm a lot older than 18. Don't, don't get me fired up because I tell you, I haven't had a good rant for a while. Ah, uh, oh, just to fit. That, oh, I thought you were having a shot at Office Works. Just to fit. No, I mean, they did that, but um, it just, yeah, anyway. Doesn't matter, I've got it sorted. All good. Um, all right, now, I might see if I can glue up this pillar, if I can find it. Here we go. Here we go, here we go, here we go. This is, uh, oh, the pillar for the harp. That hurt. For the harp, and it goes, I forgot which way it goes. It goes that way, that's right. It goes like that. So, you saw the top, I've got... Put that up there. Sit. Stay. What an obedient bit of... Oh, I wish my kids were that obedient. It'd be good, wouldn't it? Okay. So there's the top part. And there's the other part. So that's how it's going to go together. Morton, Mor Morton Bay. Mortis and tenon going into the neck. Mortis and tenon going into the sound box. There's a block down there. And then the sound box... Uh, yeah, the sound box I'm going to do out of Blackwood too. I've got those pieces floating around here. Uh, but they, according to the book, they're just butt joint. But me being me, I'm actually going to um, 
dovetail them wherever they are. So that's, now I've got two liars here to put together. Here's one that, ah, oh yeah, this is a, a little, that's the guts of it. And these are um, Chilean myrtle. Listen to the sound on that, this is. Nice sound. So that cleaned up, then these go on there, and then there's a hole cut there, and then there's a um, something or other string holder thing here, then a bridge across here, and you sort of play it by plucking the strings with these hands or muting them, and then going like that. So that one's down the track, that's an experimental one. And I've got another one here that I've just glued up those parts and I've got some other stuff over there to put in there. So and this one's Spanish cedar, so we'll, we'll see how it all goes. Oh, there's the block for the other stuff. There you go, that's the other block that's all done. Uh, but right now, we let's see if we can glue this neck together. And what I'm going to do is rough it up. That goes in the middle, I think. That's an outside bit. And that's an outside bit. So that's the middle bit. The issue I had when I glued it together was, well, it had been raining, so the glue didn't go off. But I didn't get a real good grip on it. So what I'm going to do is rough it up with a toothing plane. We'll be going for time. Should be able to get, I'll get half of it done anyway. Rough it up with a toothing plane and um, get some veneer on it and see how we go. So we'll do this bit first. How am I going to do that? That can go there, that can go there. That's not going to work. I think you'll love it when things don't work. Oh, hang on. Wait a minute. How about what like that'll do? Okay. So this is a toothing plane and it's used primarily when you're veneering. I do have a strip of veneer going between these bits. So it just keys up. Um, I'll see if we are, oh, I might put a clamp on there. It keys up <coughs> the timber fibres to give you a better glue, gluing surface. So let's see how we go on here. We do this and we do that. And we come down, whoop, now we go up. Up, 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 up. There you go. To there. All right, so I'm just going to key this. And let's do that and that so you can see me doing it. Now going across the grain. And it's just roughing it up a bit. I haven't got enough tooth coming out. Which is annoying. Um, just look at Terry's hammer. Yeah. No, it's not going to work. Oh, got a wooden one down here. This one. There you go. Here it cutting now. Got too much out. Fixed or famine. A 
good side. other side because this is the middle one. Yep. the outside, this is the inside. Jam it between those two dogs there. One thing I love about working for yourself or by yourself is you learn to do things by yourself. And nothing annoys me more than being in the workshop and somebody comes in whilst you're doing something. Oh, let me help you with that. No, go away. You know, you can do it by yourself, but... Because they can't do it by themselves, they go, how could you do it? And I guess a lot of that I learned from my dad. My dad was an amputee, he only had one arm. And, uh, you know, the things he did with one arm, a lot of people with two arms wouldn't do. He used to go out sailing in the ocean by himself in his yacht rigged up self-steering gear so you could actually, you know, set it on a cord. He could walk up the bow and pull down the jib and wrap it up whilst the boat was sailing. And he made this other thing that um, was a hook that went around his back of his knee so he could do something with his arm whilst he was still steering the boat. Ingenious, ingenious. Oh, love you, Dad, if you want. 
from on high. Uh, okay. Now. We will attempt the middle one. It's the outside one, okay. We'll do one and then we'll do the other one tomorrow. I think that was what my problem was. I tried too much in one go. That should cut off in a minute. Here we go. I like the idea of veneer going down the middle. Especially if you're going to laminate something. A lot of people laminate and I was at around a friend's place as I mentioned earlier. It was a, he started out as a furniture maker and then ended up in luthier work. And we were looking at some guitars and you could tell they were laminated because on the edges they'd muddied it up with uh, stain so you couldn't see the joins. Let's see, we knew. We knew. So instead of trying to pretend that it's not two pieces laminated together, I put the veneer in it and then it looks as if it's a feature because it's got a pinstripe in it. So what I'm going to do here down. Although I am looking to buy some um, really nice two inch board so I can do this out of one piece. But I won't know about that until tomorrow maybe or the next day. I said before, when you cut in the ear, don't try and do it in one slice. Just take your time. You will get through it eventually. That bit there, a little bit of. I'm going to use tight bond on this. Ideally, I would like 10 minutes for um go off, but soon I don't have that. Oh, I can read the chat. Give me a couple of minutes. All right, let's have a chin wag. Oh, how am I going for time? Oh, I reckon I'll just about get it done and then I'll have to skiddy addle. What's, whoa, gone too big now. My, 
my chat room just shrunk on me. There you go. Oh, yeah. Um. <laughs> it's not holding up the music stand at all, Dev. Um. Da -da 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 -bum. Oh, that's true, Vince. Yeah, that's true. Tailpiece. What tailpiece? Um, no, this is, yeah, this is a pillar. This is the front. You've got the neck, and then you've got the pillar, then you've got the sound box. This is the pillar. Oh, well, good day back to you. Back, welcome from Brisbane, Australia. Do you help Dad, or does he just feel good having someone appreciate how hard he works? Okay, so what I'm going to do is this is going to go on the, and then is going to go. Hang on, wait a minute. Wait, wait. No, that's right. I've got it's the other way around. That goes there, which means that one goes there. Which means then it's that other one that goes on there. This one will go on there. Okay. All right. Let's put some baking paper down so I don't make a mess in my bench. Because I'd hate to get glue on the music stands, Jeff. that rip your shorts off thought it was long but not quite long enough so let's go longer use that bit later on pour something i'm sure <coughs> okay that goes there that goes there that goes there that means that's pretty close to being glued so i love about tight bond original it goes off quickly you don't get much open pot time with it. Okay. Here we go. And I'll get a... I'll get a veneering hammer. It's a bit sad, that one. A bit of a clean, couldn't it? Doesn't matter, because you're not going to see this veneer anyway. Okay. Here goes. Here goes. <whistles> Glue. Let's go there. Let's go there. Whack it on. We've got the right step. And I'm going to double glue. Means I'm going to put glue on both sides. I think I've got a little bit of sawdust in this glue actually, just looking at it. <clears throat> but it won't make too much difference for this. Put that on there. With a bit of a Hammer, hold it down. Okay, I'm going to take this bit off now, and that should, ah, uh, didn't. That'd be all right. We'll just hammer it, hammer it down. Okay, make some. Glue on this. And glue on this side. <clears throat> I think that was a 
problem when I did it the first time I did all five bits together and it was too long for me to get a real good seal so here I'm just joining two together with a veneer strip in the middle and that should get me a bother I think when I come down tomorrow I'll be able to do the other one okay this in here put the glue pot back Okay, and I don't want to get glue everywhere. Just pop that in. Do that up. Um, what I might do is get a couple of extra bits if I've got some. This one there. And the other one, I'll put that the other side. Oh yes, so and so. Go there. This one can go here. Okay. Then just give it a good tighten. With high glue, you don't want it over tight. The uh, new glues, yeah. Give them a good squeeze, but high glue, you don't want it so tight that you squeeze all the glue out of it. It's just one of those strange things. Okay, that's good, that's good. That's good. Give me another one. One more for luck under here. <sighs> or maybe, maybe two for luck. Show you what that looks like now. Just in the vice and pull that out tomorrow, and hopefully, I'm hoping it's glued up. I did notice there was a bit of a, a bend in one of them, so I'm just hoping that's moisture. No else. Oh dear, oh dear. Got to go and help my daughter with her engineering. Well, you do that, Louise. I'll catch up with you later. Uh, no on the dulcimer. Way, way be, you are way behind. What? No on the dulcimer. You are way behind. Oh, oh, okay. Did I? There was a, a neck on the dulcimer. Was it, Derek? Let's see if I can find you now. Um, oh, tailpiece. Oh, yes. Tailpiece on the dulcimer. Yeah, I've got a couple. Uh, there's one that's like a guitar um, machine head. And there's another one which is a scroll that I've carved. 
So I don't know which way to go. I don't know. But anyway, that's it. And I've got four minutes to get up to the shed. So I'm in front. Let me just turn that off. There we go. Do that. Grab that. And that's it. Just a very quick one to say hi. I'm still in the land of the living. Thanks, everyone, for hopping on and saying good day. It was funny. I couldn't find the microphone. I thought, oh, perhaps I won't stream. And I really wanted to. It was, oh, no. I, I like having my friends in the workshop. It's good. Yeah, I fixed the fruit barrel. So they're going to be happy with that. Uh, what else should we do? Oh, I started on a tailpiece jig. That pillar together, so the all in all, very successful afternoon. But this is Steve pulling the shadow down saying, remember to keep it sharp, but more importantly, keep it safe. Look after yourself, be kind to each other, and I look forward to having your company in the workshop at the workbench again very, very soon. If you're in Queensland or in New South Wales where you're getting tranced, I hope you're not too wet and everything's working all right for you. If you're not getting rain and you want it in Victoria, you can have some of ours. And, um, yeah, that's it. So good afternoon, good morning, good night, good evening. God bless. Catch you all later on. Bye for now.